Hello again, lovely people. I wanted to talk a minute about LiPo batteries. So I am not an expert by any means, so I'm just going to share with you what I know, which is probably, like everything else, enough to be dangerous. So if you really want to get into the topic, please do some YouTube searching. There are plenty of videos out there that talk about them because they can be dangerous devices, even as small as this. So for the older generation, you'll remember back in the days when even our cell phones had LiPo batteries that were a little bigger than this that you could actually take out and replace. Um, through the years, there have been the, even the phone companies have had problems with these batteries exploding on airplanes and such because they, again, are very temperamental devices. Reason being is that they're, they're high amperage devices in most cases compared to our usual Duracell batteries. So when they discharge, they can discharge a lot of energy at once and cause fires and explosions. All right, that being said, and because of that, yes, when it came to the remote control that we are now building for Nova, I considered adding a BMS system, but because the remote is already pretty much packed, I didn't want to play around with it. And because we didn't do it for Nova, I definitely didn't see the worth in doing it, doing it for the remote. But if you don't do that, then the common practice is to, like with Nova, when the battery drains, you have to open it up, pop the battery out, disconnect it, take it over to your charger, in this case, this big charger, connect it up and let the charger handle charging that battery. Because this is the same type of battery we use in Nova, which is a three cell battery, which means it has three separate batteries in here. Okay, all wired together. So then the charger, <clears throat> excuse me, controls I don't think trickle charge is the word, but it controls and balances the charging of those three cells to keep them even, and because that's very important in the construction and use of a LiPo battery. So that's why you really have to use the proper charging system. Please don't go plugging it into your power supply or just any other power that you can get to the leads with, because that's a dangerous no-no. If you put too much power into it, you could even risk exploding it in a lot of ways. Um, so definitely always use a charger that is meant to charge LiPo batteries. In the case of these small guys that we went with with the remote, which is a 7 volt battery, it's a 2 cell battery. Uh, if you can pick them up on Amazon and other places, like three of them and this cheap little charger for 20 bucks or so. And I just, I unscrewed this just to show you guys that, yeah, it's no small picnic, right? There are a lot of electronics involved to control the balancing and the load process and the charging process so that things don't overheat, don't overcharge, etc. And side note, you can also undercharge a battery. If you drain it too far, you could damage it and never charge it again. So LiPos are again, I'll say it probably a third time, are very temperamental devices. So please use appropriate chargers, appropriate setup, and that brings me to my discussion. Um, so yeah, this is just a four volt uh, battery. I don't use them much because most of the projects I play with need motors and that doesn't do much for motors. But for a small battery like this, you can get away with a small charger like that. This is from Adafruit, so you can even build that into your device. This may have worked for the remote, but I opted not to because I'm happy with these batteries. And we are running two OLED screens, so that little battery probably wouldn't have lasted long. Um, so, back to the discussion of the remote control battery and circuit. So, because the remote, I have the back of it here, it's got some hardware in it, sorry. Because it's designed so tight, the battery fits in there, you're going to have wires over the top of your battery installation. To remove that battery to charge it every time would be quite annoying. It'll probably last quite a while, I'm guessing, without needing to be charged, but it would still be quite annoying. So, again, I didn't want to go the full-fledged BMS system, and because I think the circuitry would be a little too big for this, it wouldn't be a nice tiny version like this Adafruit one here. If that were the case, great, we would have done it, but... <laughs> um, and again, there's not much room in there. So, what I've done with other projects, which... Yes, if I had thousands of followers, I'm sure there'd be a lot of comments down below and arguing this, but your batteries have the charging leads, which is a negative and then two positive leads, and then you have your positive and negative lead that runs your devices. 
okay so in normal circumstances you plug this into your device while it's working then you unplug that and then go plug this into your charger that's that's the key is you have to unplug disconnect the device to be able to charge and vice versa you have to disable disconnect the charge and be able to use the device and that's also for safety reasons so i take the easy way out and basically i cut the ground wire that goes to the jst as you can see here and then double shrink wrap it make sure that's really nice and tight i use skinny shrimp shrink wrap and then a thicker one over it because you don't want that exposed or touching anything metal or god forbid the positive line because that would cause a fire or if not explode the battery so yes i cut that jst connector and then i take the other end of the jst ground and run it to a single pole double throw switch so what that is is off in the middle position and it's double throw because it can control two devices pushing it one way gives power to one pushing it the other way gives power to the other so that's what I've wired up here. So as I've just stated that you cannot have the charger and the device connected at the same time. That's dangerous, nor will it charge properly. So this switch controls that. So now basically the ground from the battery goes to the middle terminal on the switch. And then one side goes to the JST to charge and the other side goes to our regulator to power our device. So if I switch this to this side, it would be ready for charging. I could plug it into the charger. If I switch it the opposite way, then it powers our device. Okay? So, again, not the best solution, not the safest solution. Doesn't give us any charging, no overcharge, no reverse current detection, none of that fun stuff that a BMS would give us. It just, but it does give us this exposed GST in the back of our remote. Right there is where it will go. So you will not have to open the remote control. What I've done with this uh, cheap little charger that comes with these batteries, if I just created my own JST cable with a male JST on the end here. So then this just plugs in to there and away I go. I'm charging once I throw that switch. Okay, so that's what we decided to do for the remote. Um, regarding Nova, there has been some discussion at least about mounting the battery better because right now guys i just have mine in there because any of you who know who are also building this it's a pretty tight squeeze so the battery doesn't have much room to move around anyway however jordan and i were talking about this when we were fixing all the 3d models is he was wondering if we could somehow mount it in the cover and it appears that would work right now i just have a piece of double stick tape on it to hold it in place but I did have concern when he first suggested it to me because I don't really have a plan for this bottom used to have a couple of other pieces in it. Right now it has two things, the PWM controller and our five volt regulator. So yeah, I mean, with all the wiring, it does make it a little obstructive to get the battery in there. Normally I install my battery up on end like that because it fits much better. Of course, it's not right now with the camera rolling and wiring, but there we go. That's how I normally run mine. And again, it's in there pretty good. However, for those of you who remember, I built this cage around this regulator because my battery must have banged into mine and broke one of the capacitors on my regulator and I had to replace that. So, but now that, that that's caged in, I mean, this has got so much wiring cushion it and normally I would mount this down the PWM controller, but I am, um, in the middle of still playing around here so I'm not ready to do that yet but what do you guys think i just wanted to put it out there for you all that yes there are various ways we could do it you could throw a couple of brackets on here to hold it inside of here we could even just do a simple velcro strap or, or even another plastic bracket on here to hold it to the cover i i think i might just leave it up to you guys to mount your own battery as you see fit the same way i don't really dictate to you how to arrange your electronics and do your wiring all right so yeah guys i just wanted to throw that out there please be safe playing around these batteries uh, again i'm no professional and haven't that much knowledge of them but i know enough to to play around with them um, make sure you have the right charger for the right batteries so that you can charge them properly uh, these devices are pretty cool it's, it's basically a um 
a meter to see how much of the battery is left. And I'm going to cover up the speakers on it because it's pretty dang loud. And see, now I have to throw my switch because we have no quote unquote charging power until I do that. So this will show you how many cells and how much each cell has charged individually and then the total for both of them combined. So I just recharged this last night in my uh, circuit here to ensure that everything was working great. But yeah, this is a cool little device that I've even seen some guys actually use physically in their project because that warning beep you heard goes off mad when the, the uh, power goes down. And it can be used for multiple battery types from 2S up to, I'm not sure, at least 4S, I'm sure. So, yeah, one other side note, guys, I was going to do a remote control build video this evening. However, I got my switches in, but dummy me somehow ordered momentary switches, and that's not going to work. So I just reordered the correct one, but the reason being is we want to go for that smaller size. Uh, Steffi over on Discord had these in stock, so we were about ready to use those, but it was a little tricky to get it into the... Um, remote control but yes we need a snap locking version like that just a little bit smaller I'm not sure you can see the size difference there guys but there you go so yeah mine should be here on the fourth and then I will do a build video and then other piece of great news is my new PCB should be here any day and eh there's only one tiny change, which I went over in my previous video, so surely not exciting for most of you. But when that comes, I'll probably do an open box video, as well as swap it out and reinstall for my new one. Alright everybody, thanks for watching, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.